DARPA's $30 million, 6.5 ton autonomous ground vehicle is graduating today. Its creators at Carnegie Mellon Robotics Institute have come to Fort Bliss, Texas for a field demonstration of the vehicle they call the Crusher. The state-of-the-art electronics on board allow Crusher to assess and map the terrain around it in real time. Depending on its decisions, it will either avoid or obliterate the obstacles in its path with its six 49-inch tires. There's no room on board for a pilot, but Crusher can transport a 3,000-pound payload. Crusher's variable payload today consists of a 6-meter extendable surveillance mast and a gun. We have a system, uh, a system whereby we can train the vehicle what is and is not an obstacle. We need to see the terrain, we need to understand whether it's a hazard or not. Yeah. And if it is a hazard, obviously we have to steer away from it. Those big batting eyes you see are laser range finders. Crusher uses these in combination with radar and optical cameras to get its bearings and to decide what to avoid and what to crush. So in total we have six cameras on this robot uh, in addition to all the, the sensing cameras that the autonomy system uses. We have uh, a bunch of cameras. Uh, there are eight here looking forward. There are two groups of four on either side looking to the sides. And then we also have these four cameras here looking uh, very far forward um, in a what they call stereoscopic configuration. So these cameras are working like the human eyes, yes. that by having a pair of them, you can actually get depth perception in front of the vehicle. So we have uh, four uh, laser range finders here, these devices nodding up and down. Uh, they fire invisible laser beams uh, in front of the vehicle and they measure the distance to the terrain. So there's another laser range finder that's looking much farther out, about uh -huh. uh, six to seven meters in front of the vehicle. There are a variety of ways uh, this machine can be controlled. Mm -hmm. One way is, of course, by its onboard computers when it's driving autonomously. This is the Urban Obstacle Course, a little container city in the middle of the Texas desert. In autonomous mode, Crusher's mission is to avoid all the obstacles placed in its path. It, it, it's building a map as it, as it observes the, the environment. It's a way that passes things it's seen before. But the system is able to navigate uh, the, the real world as it changes with its local perception. Uh, it can also be controlled by a person uh, who happens to be up there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you can see he's wearing a, a yellow box uh, yes. on his belt. Uh, he has joysticks and buttons he can push to basically make this vehicle do anything. So this is the remote control that the, um, the chase vehicle operator is using. And that's, that's really for us to be safe, because this vehicle is so big and heavy, we can't have it run wild. The main reason why the chase vehicle has this controller is for the e-stop button here. So if anything is going wrong, or if uh, you know, there's something that gets in front of the vehicle that wasn't supposed to be there, he can press the e-stop and the robot stops. Uh, hold on a second. And the third way it can be controlled is by someone at a remote site. There is a, a setup uh, whereby uh, a soldier, for example, can sit in front of a screen viewing images from this camera, okay? And uh, sitting in front of a steering wheel and a gas pedal and brake, basically, and uh, uh, drive the vehicle. Now operate now here and what we've told him to I think he's gonna go around the containers right. a little bit right. give you a little bit of a show in general this is probably a little bit sloppier right um, because he has to interpret a lot more data a lot of data very quickly this is his intent This demonstration of might, though impressive, is only to show how easily Crusher dispenses with obstacles. The payload can also be remotely controlled 
and to reduce the learning curve for young soldiers who will be operating it, Carnegie Mellon researchers decided to use familiar tools. Yes, any, anything that we're logging on the vehicle we can get on this iPod. Yeah. So here we can raise the mast up. This is the, the surveillance system that folks would use. The vehicle's driving itself along, and uh, we're using this to kind of look around and see what's going on in the area. So right now we control all the payloads with an Xbox 360 controller. <laughs> And he's doing this with the uh, D-pad on his uh, on the uh, Xbox controller. There. You get an extra life if you hit uh, YX, YX, YX. Later this year, the Crusher technology goes to the Army's Tank Research Center. But the original stays with its creators at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh.